known when I be on the mic. I'm internationally known, yo. I'm internationally known when I be on the mic. Welcome to the Being Neo Podcast. <laughs> you guys have no idea how randomly I record sometimes, but I'm about to fill you in. I'm, this is so random that I literally do not even have a fact ready for episode 10. I don't have a fact. Um, man. All right, I have one. So today I went to the fitness expo here in Medellin and... Most fit countries, top 10 most fit countries in the world. Let's do that. So let's figure out what that is. So for me, going to this fitness thing, just it just opens up so many things in my mind. Um, and so let's start with the 10 most fit countries in the world because of the fitness expo. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So. The top healthiest countries in the world. Number one, this is so shocking to me. Wow. See, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get some context into what they consider healthiest. But we got Switzerland at number one, Sweden at number two, Japan at three, Norway at four, Iceland at five, Australia at six. Now I'm not gonna read through all of them, so let's go to the bottom. The United you know, Ladies and gentlemen, coming in in a strong last place, the United States, people in the United States. Monaco, France, and China are all healthier than the United States. What a shocker. And in terms of 20 most fit countries, which country has the healthiest, which country has the most fittest people? Denmark is ranked among the most fit countries in the world with a life expectancy of 81.4 years. That's reported by the World Bank. So, wow. Cool. So we got facts out of the way, so we can jump into this subjective conversation. I hate facts sometimes. Facts don't tell you tell you anything other than you know what's happened historically. It's just something in from ah. Just like listen to that one more time, and we're about to smoke, people. But I want you to just hear what I said one more time. Facts. Facts don't really tell you anything other than what's historically happened. What we historically know, or what we've historically proven. And so, when I was a kid, I used to lie all the time. And you could say that. You could say, Neo at eight is a liar. Actually, that's a fact. That would have been a fact at eight years old. Um, but uh, everything's subject to change, right? Right? Just because there was this that may have been true then it doesn't hold it to be something that has to always be. And so I'm not trying to get too deep into the matrix right now, but like, let's talk about it. The reality is just because I was 350 pounds, which could have been factual information in the moment of time in which I stepped on the scale and gravity told me that this amount of weight was being pressed down on said device, it's subject to change. It is absolutely still, as long as you continue to breathe, subject to change. All right, cool. So I'm at this fitness expo and, and guys, today was a magical day. Um, it's a magical day for so many different reasons. So many things that just kind of like unlock for me. And it's crazy how things kind of, I guess, come about or how you become more aware of certain specific things. And so I'm at this fitness expo. And the first thing is, um, my friend who I just met, his name's Daniel, just met him. Like, uh, Tuesday. I met him Tuesday of last week. The date of this recording, it is a Sunday. And so I met him the following Tuesday. So it hasn't even been a week that I've known this gentleman. And um, he's Polish. He speaks Polish, English, and Spanish. 
Uh, he may speak another language. I don't know. I should probably do it on the podcast, see if we'll get him on. But cool guy. But he meets me. He's got an allergen. And he's allergic. He's got a gluten allergen. And so that really takes a lot of different things out of what he's willing to eat or try. And we're at this fitness expo. And if you don't know, fitness expos tend to have a lot of like samples of whatever they're trying to sell you. Um, gummies for this, shakes for that, pills for this, amino acid drink, like just a ton of different things, right? And so when you have an allergen, you can't just put anything in your body, right? You, like you gotta, you have to look, read, see if it's got the things you're allergic to in it or not. All right, let's like this. And so, for those of you on camera, I look a hot mess, don't I? This was like completely impromptu. Had all these things coming into my mind that I was like, dude, what are you doing? This is why you podcast. You're a podcaster so that you can share these crazy things that are in your mind. And so here we are. So again, you got to look and see what's on these things, right? Like what's in the, what's in this thing. And for me, as a coach, as a nutritional fitness coach, as someone that has people that literally use me to do their nutrition to prevent them from having symptoms with their disease. Like this is not someone like I have clients that don't come to me just because they want to lose 20 pounds or just because they feel fat or just because they want to win a show or just because they want to win a race. I have people that come to me because they will die or have an absolutely paralyzing life without my nutritional assistance or the nutritional assistance of someone. Because listen, I'm not the only person that does nutrition. And so I love that, but it means that me as well, I don't just take something because you're like, hey, this is protein, drink it. I'm like, yo, if I need protein, I'll eat meat, calm down. Let me read what's in it. Like, you know, um, What are you using to sweeten it? Because I don't put a lot of the poison that people put in what they call healthy supplements in my body. I just don't do it. I had one guy today who could not tell me what certain thing was sweetened with and his response to not being able to tell me what the certain thing sweetened was sweetened with tell proceeds to tell me the American, but it's approved by the FDA. I don't give a flying fuck what the FDA said. They approved the fucking vaccines that everybody took in their body. And now I have fucking professional athletes dying of cardiovascular and myocardi myocardial infarctions. So please don't sit here and tell me what the FDA approved. I don't give a fuck what the FDA approves. Can you guys tell I'm passionate about that? Was that was that clear? Cool. I'm glad we got past that. All right. So I continue. So I'm looking at labels, reading things and, you know, doing that, which is cool. But these people, listen, I got to be 100% honest with you. Not one, not one booth asked, any, asked either of us to try something without first asking us if we had any allergens. Do we have any allergens? Do we have any sensitivities? Not, not one. Now, I have not been to a fitness expo since, oh my goodness, man, Europa, circa 20, 2019, maybe. No, uh, 2020, 2020 or 2021, I was at whatever the last KetoCon or, yeah, the, whatever the last KetoCon was in Austin, I was there. What year was that? Anybody fill me in? I want to say that was pre-pandemic, but it could have been post-pandemic. In either case, that's the last fitness conference I've been to. I really don't like to go to them. Um, and there it was more of the same and similar to this, which is basically, yeah, take this, eat it. It's great. It's clean. It's great. It's clean. Eat it. It's like your fucking subjective ass definition of what you think is safe, clean, and taste is just, oh my goodness, horrible and really buried. Um, so... I'm sitting here thinking about that and I'm thinking about all of these people that are here with the vanity and desire to have great looking bodies, but don't have the discipline to take care of their actual health, right? Like they're the, uh, they are the most beautiful, unhealthy people ever. And I mean, listen, I'm guilty of that. Uh, and when I say I'm guilty of that, I mean it, I'm guilty of it, because I have for years been the person that was just into physically how I looked, how I appeared, and then how I looked and how I appeared would then dictate and determine what or how I would change, whatever it was, 
my food intake, my supplementation, or any of those things. And for those that are looking at the visual of this, I mean, guys, I am, I don't know, 185 pounds right now at 6'2", six, 6'1". Six, so I'm not, I'm, dude, I'm not, I'm not big. Um, not right now, I'm not. And in some of the photos and things I've shared on the internet, I'm, I think the heaviest photo I have recorded data is like 270 pounds. So when you guys see that fat picture of me that floats around, I'm like 270 in this picture. But the heaviest I ever was on a scale when I actually was checking was 340 pounds. And that was after I had actually been in the gym for a little bit. So it could have been more than that. My point in saying all that is I know what it feels like to walk around at 300 plus pounds. So when people look at me now, like old me would have been at this fitness expo thinking about the people walking around that look bigger than me. The people walking around that had a higher level of muscle quality on their frame, or I shouldn't even say muscle quality, muscle volume on their frame. But when I look at all of these people and then I look at each one of them just going to one stand to the next stand to the next stand to the next stand to the next stand, eating and eating and taking in and consuming these things. For me, I thought to myself, yo, you're going to be like so many other of these young fitness bodybuilding athletes that die at an early age because you're abusing the, the positive ability and capabilities of anabolics in conjunction with putting all sorts of bullshit in your body in the hopes and expectations that this is the magic protein that is going to get you to win first place when the reality is it's only going to get you to die earlier because it is absolutely loaded with bullshit. How in the fuck can you create a supplement that's supposed to be for the health and nutrition and fitness industry and it have dive? Why the fuck do I need my protein powder to, to look a certain color? It's in a fucking colored shaker cup. And I'm going to add shit to it most likely, right? So like maybe I'm putting peanut butter in it. Maybe I'm putting some kind of fruit. I'm definitely going to add milk or water. So like whatever the color is of said, said shake, what? why do I need a dye in what you're telling me is supposed to make me more fit and healthy? This bullshit. We all, I, I'm on this rant, so we're just going to fucking continue. We all need to do a better job of pushing the supplement industry to do better at creating quality fucking products because it does not matter how much muscle you carry on the frame of your body if your insides are full of shit. Let that just soak in. So when people ask me, you know, so why do I train? I try, I train to be fucking dangerous. I train to be absolutely fucking dangerous. That's why I train. Because if I'm living my actual life like I am right now in different parts of the world, whenever it is I choose to be in those different parts of the world, and you want to fuck with me, man, get in line. Because this title fight is absolutely not going to end in the way that you're thinking. And that's because of how I train. My strength is up there. And <laughs> shout out to any of you that are listening to my podcast that have trained with me in the last few years. You know damn well right now, there's very few people that know my outlift than me as far as weights. And it doesn't matter what their size up, sizes are. Um, I am absolutely and unequivocally strong as fuck. And just because my size doesn't necessarily reflect what it used to be, my strength is still absolutely there. Um, and I know some of you right now are asking for some objective information. So um, objective information, I'm going to give you like fresh numbers. Fresh numbers, I'll squat 315 20 times. Fresh numbers, I'll squat 220, or I'll bench 225 15 times. Um, man, I'll probably deadlift 405 for 15 ish. Um, I'm strong, fucking strong. Now, have I been stronger in my life at other times? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. Um, but I don't care because I literally do not lift or train in those mannerisms uh, anymore, you know? And, and to be honest, the next thing I'm gonna say about this fitness expo is as I was going through it, I thought to myself, I always say to any of my clients and I'm coaching as they're going through, we're, we're looking at their business, looking at their life, looking at adjustments and changes that need to be made. I'm always like, be the thing that you're actually wanting to be instead of playing the game of what you think people are perceiving you as. And like, why? So what I mean by that is, if you want to date the hot fit model and you're fat 
and full of not attracting hot fit model, then be the thing that you're looking for. Be the hot fit model. Take care of your appearance. Take care of your diet. Go to the gym. Be active and be fit. Train. Make the adjustments and changes necessary to be the thing that you're trying to attract. The hot fit model. Um, and so in saying that, I started thinking about, okay, so all these people are here. They're saying that they want to be healthy and fit. And physically, they're exerting themselves, putting the stress in their body to appear this way. But then they're taking these things filled with drugs, chemicals, and other things, which are not good for them in an effort to have something that's temporary. Right? And like, yo, I had one of the most amazing things today. Who was at the fitness expo here in Medellin, Colombia? Can anybody guess? Eight-time Mr. Olympia. Can anybody guess? He is of a similar complexion to myself. And again, I ask, can anybody guess? Ronnie Pullman. And listen, I idolize this man. You know, um, I used to tell people when I was big and just working on getting bigger, I wanted to walk around and crush concrete because that's how he looked to me. Like him, it's not just him, him, um, Nasser El Sabati, I think I said that correctly. There's a few bodybuilders at times growing up that, you know, some bodybuilders you can appreciate for the quality of, you know, what they brought to the stage, like a Sean Ray. And then there's other people that, um, Kai Green, come to, the, come to the stage and you're just like, you look like a fucking monster. You, you just, the amount of mass you've been able to put on your frame and carry, it just looked like a fucking monster. Ronnie Coleman was that. And to see that man today, um, super nice guy, but to see that man today in his current form, I was like, fuck, I'm so glad I didn't continue with that. I'm so glad that I am way more into functionally training my body, calisthenics, and keeping and maintaining my strength um, than trying to just build as much mass as I possibly can because I like to be able to move. I like to be able to be fast, like super fast. I like to be fast for myself. Um, I like to have the cardiovascular stamina that I have right now, always. Like this is how I feel optimal. And so in saying all that, I'm looking at these people and thinking of the fitness goal. And then I'm thinking to myself, Neo, you always talking about people being the thing but you, you don't be the thing. I know that's not proper English, but I'm not being the thing. You know, this is the Being Neo podcast. My socials are Being Neo. And I cannot tell you how often I am looking for an excuse to do, be, or transform into anything other than myself. It is not a fucking accident that I'm 41 years old now, and I just finally recently had the revelation of the piece that I did not have, I was giving away. Why did it take me 41 years to figure that out? It didn't. It took me two. It took me two solid years in therapy of me spending time inter introspectively thinking about looking at talking to and understanding my past, my present, and the things I desired in my future to understand my right now. Fuck, <laughs> oh, man. I'm so glad I hit record. Um... Being me scares the fucking shit out of me. Because what happens if I fail to be successful as myself? Fuck. What happens if I fail to be successful as myself? Like, I could be anything else and fail at it, then it'd be all good because it's not who I am. Like, that's just the thing that I occupy for this moment in time. It's like telling someone, oh, whatever, it's fine. I don't give a shit you broke up with me. I didn't love you anyway. When, when you were madly in love with them and you just never had admitted it to yourself or to them. Oh, um, like, what do I do if I fail at myself? So, yeah, I'll date you with all these fucked up problems because I can focus all my efforts on helping you with the fucked up problems. And then 
me not being me is okay because I've, I've been too busy to be myself. I've been helping you with these fucked up problems. And it doesn't matter what the fucked up problems are. Seriously. I mean, I dated a mom once that was currently married, trying to get divorced, but still wasn't separated and had twin kids that were under five years old. The fuck? Why would I do that? Why would I date a mom that's still currently living with her husband, even though they're trying to get separated, but they're not financially stable enough to do that while I'm making six figures a year and decide that I should date said mother of two children under five years old. Literally, I remember showing up to my boy's job for lunch and him looking at my car like, bro, why the fuck do you have two car seats in your car? Like, why the, why the fuck do you have two car seats in your car? And I'm like, oh, they're... I was about to say the name, can't do that. They're blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what? You're a fucking dad now? And I'm like 20, 24 years old. And he's like, literally like, bro, what the fuck are you doing with your life right now? And I'm like, she's hot, bro. (laughs) And guys, I'm talking like time after time after time. There's some reason why I'm dating the person I shouldn't be dating. You guys know that my first ex-wife literally took my number when I gave it to her and ripped it up in front of my face. And then I married her. Tell me I don't have game. Why am I playing for the shit that I shouldn't be playing for anyway? Because if I fail at those things, it's okay. Because I'm not failing at me. Why do I date all of these girls that have all these problems or that make me change who I am to be with them? Why do I feel, why have I felt that I need to be someone else to be with them? (laughs) Those insecurities are not insecurities about anything other than me being my true self and fearing as if people won't accept and like who that is. And all of this is me giving my peace away and yet then forcing me to search for the very thing that I just gave away. It's like taking your keys, hiding them, and then acting as if you don't know where you just put them. But honestly, not knowing because I have been living my life in this pattern of the cyclical cycle of bullshit that I have created within myself because I have not taken the time to face this thing. Me not being me. So I'm at this fitness expo and I'm thinking to myself, like this stuff is all cool and all. Like there was, um, there were different aspects. I had like CrossFit games. And so they had that and people doing like little lifts and challenges and shit. And I'm just like, you know what I'd like to see? Me taking a crazy ass picture in a flag. Not with a flag, but in a flag position. Like, that's what, you know, like, I want to do more traveling to, like, these amazing monumental places around the world and do different calisthenic things that make people go, how in the fuck is that possible? Like, planche push-ups. Like, that, for me, would be awesome. But when I go to the gym, I just train to get in a certain amount of training volume things done because my mindset has always been, like, all right, well, I need this training volume for these results because I want to put this kind of size on. I want to get my strength numbers to this. And so like I create training volumes around those goals. But the reality is, yes, I can go hit the gym, bodybuilding style in an hour and 10 minutes, get in and get out and have the results I want. I like the way I look. I take my shirt off. I love the way I look right now. Um, And I haven't had not one woman complain when I take my shirt off at all. I'm good with that. No, I don't look like a fucking monster. I mean, I have friends of mine bigger than me. I like, no, but I like the way I look and that's all that matters. So that said, then training these moves that I want to do, they take longer than an hour and 10 minutes because there's certain things that repetitiously you have to do leading up to training a certain movement, like a flag or um, planche pushups or handstands or you know, any of these things, the levers, front levers, reverse levers, whatever, like there are different modalities to train said things. And because of the different training styles of calisthenics, it's very easy for me to be in the gym for two and a half hours. 
because I could do a, an hour workout, like bodybuilding style when I'm hitting weights, but then I could do two hours after that different calisthenic mov movements to train my core, which I could train every single day, to train my grip strength, which I could train every single day, to train the different ancillary auxiliary movements that are necessary to do some of the movements that I'd like to do calisthenic, but I can't do that because I have other things to do. I've got to pretend to run a full service marketing agency. <laughs> I've got to pretend to care about chasing after the money that you owe for the services that have been rendered because that's what I have to do to do everything else that's necessary. When the reality is I just want to shut your fucking website off and say, go fuck yourself and then move right along to having my consultations and talking to those people that have business ideas in their heart and are trying to figure out how to create them into a reality to so have, have been waiting on this dream and holding this dream that they haven't and helping and speaking to them about how to take that dream and help form it into a reality right now. Not next year, not two years from now, but but right now. And I can't do that because I'm on the fucking call, on the phone doing collection calls for people that owe money for things that have already been rendered. It's literally me working in the present about the past and I don't wanna do that shit. It's all about the new and the now and the tomorrow. So why am I calling you right now with the present about the shit that's already been done yesterday that you haven't taken care of that you're going to tell me you'll get paid tomorrow. It's totally the opposite of who the fuck I am. And it's driving me nuts. <laughs> so that said, link is in the description. I get on my calendar. If you have a dream, a business dream, a life dream, maybe it's traveling, maybe it's just a certain business, maybe it's a certain um, spouse, husband, woman, doesn't matter, husband, wife, um, Get on my calendar and let's talk because I love to help take my perspective on the crazy things that I've experienced in my life, my, my successes, my failures, and help you forge towards exactly what it is that you want. And that could be business, that could be traveling, that could be personal, that could be any of those things. But um, let's talk. Um, freeyourmind.store. Just go to freeyourmind.store, click on I am Neo, consulting with Neo. And when you get there, it'll give you all the different things. You can buy time slots for me as little as a half hour, 50 bucks. And you'll, as soon as you buy it, you'll get an email that has the um, link to my calendar to get on my calendar. Or you can go into the link in the description, get on my calendar, but you won't have a call actually happen until you've gone to the website and provided your payment and you approve the number. So there's that. All of that said, though, or I should say your order. All of that said, though, um, fuck, I've just got to be me and not be scared about what the result is of my failures as myself. Because how fucked up is it to be someone else and then fail and you're not enjoying that thing anyway? That's stupid, right? So, I mean, if I'm going to fail, I might as well fail and having fun and being myself. And dude, here's the thing. And this is the thing I know for sure. I can't fail at myself because it's me. I can't fail at being me. It's impossible. I am who the fuck I am. That's the freedom in it all. Um, all right, so let's fast forward a little bit. So I'm at the expo. We're going through all these things. And um, I'm watching people. You know, at first, so at first they're trying to shove their stuff in your throat. Like, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. And then after they're trying to get you to take it, and then they're trying to get you to buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Like, that's it. They're like, here, take this. Set. Like, this taste is going to change your life, and then you're just going to buy it. Doesn't matter what the fuck is in it, just drink it. Then buy it, buy it, buy it, because it's cheaper today. I remember one one, one company was like, yeah, it's 5,000 pesos cheaper. I'm like, so it's about a dollar cheaper today. Yeah, I'm good. Like, I'll get it whenever I, whenever I want it. The, do the dollar is not the game changer for me. And at the same time, they're then like going through all of these booths or trying to get you to buy these things. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to buy it, but can I read it? And then I read it and they're like, okay, now you want to taste it? And I'm like, sometimes yes, sometimes no, because like I just don't need it. But, you know, for those that I did taste it and try, when I, when I tell them, hey, I'm having these questions because I want to share with my followers. And look, guys. I don't know how many people are listening to the podcast at the, at, or list, yeah, listening to the podcast at the date of this released recording. But the reality is 
I don't think I have a lot of followers. I I do not feel like I have a lot of followers. And I've said on episode one, I believe, I want a million followers by the end of the year. By the end of 2024, I want a million people to follow my, my social medias. Um, and I want to be one of the highest cross group um, influencers in the world. What I mean by that is I want a million followers, but I don't want a million followers on Instagram. And then I only have 10,000 followers on TikTok. I don't want to have a million followers on Instagram and only have a thousand followers on Facebook. I want to have a million followers on each one of my social medias before the end of the year. With the exception of LinkedIn. LinkedIn can't sustain that kind of growth, I don't believe. Um, Shit, I said that out loud and it's been recorded. So I guess I can't take it back now. You guys got to help me do that. Share, 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 share. This is my plug. Please share the Being Neo podcast so that people can go into the link in the description, see my other social medias, and then follow so that I have a million on each of the platforms. Thank you for that. Um, all right, so here's the next thing. I talk about belief. We talk about red pill, blue pill. If you don't believe in who you are, either change it or open your eyes. Stop. And I'm sorry for these interruptions, guys. Logan is out and about being crazy, and it's late. And like I said, I randomly was like, I got to record this now. And I didn't want to put Logan up in his crate to do this. Um, not that he would mind being in there. I just, I didn't feel like getting up to walk to close his crate. So here we are. Um, okay, so if you are yourself and you're 100% who you are authentically, and this goes for everybody, then it's impossible to fail. So the very thing that you're fearing of doing is impossible to do, and yet you haven't done it. And I'm not just saying this to you, like this is not a, this is not a me telling you. This is me telling myself out loud and sharing it with you. Fuck. All right, so I have a best friend here. She is a gift. I love her so much. And I never have never fallen in love with a friend the way I fall in love with this one. She has opened my eyes to love in a way of which I've never known it. And it's amazing. It's super cool. She continues to teach me about things in life, about myself, about relationships. Um, I don't share names, but we met from a mutual girlfriend that we both had. <laughs> I know she knows if she's listening exactly who that I'm talking about her, but uh, yeah. So she sends me something to on Instagram and it's uh, like a horoscope reading regarding the energies of 2023 and 2024. And my Polish friend that, uh, you know, I was at the expo with, we're talking about different things. We went out to dinner after and I'm expressing to him and sharing some of my stories, you know, like here. And uh, I'm sitting here reflecting on the last year around the same time. And I was with the webcam model. And as I'm sitting here going through that and thinking about that, I'm like, my goodness, how the times have changed. Because fast forward to moments before recording this, I'm texting back and forth with not one woman, but three different women right now. And I'm, I'm not, I'm like, I'm just texting. We're having a conversation. We're just talking. We're just friends. But I currently have, I don't know, seven women. It sounds so, it sounds like I'm some kind of like gigolo, but I'm not like, I'm. these are just friends, but I'm speaking to seven different women right now um, that are all interested in possibly more with me than a friendship which is cool. I'm humbled by that. I'm humbled that there are seven people in this world that are potentially interested in wanting something serious with me in a, in a relationship, depending on how our friendship evolves. That's humbling. Really. It is like, I, I, I don't say that or say that lightly. I mean that like, wow. Now flip side to this last year, I'm giving all of my peace away to this one woman who couldn't give a, a, a percentage 
the smallest percentage of respect or reciprocation of said sacrifice. And so the, the thing that my friend sent me this horoscope is talking about the difference in the years and the risks that need to be taken, but how well they're pay off because of the different balances and the energies and the, the numbers. And, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you're right. I'm going to do the riskiest fucking thing I've ever done in my life this year, which is 120% be my authentic self and not give a fucking one fuck about it. People say, dude, why do you curse on the podcast? Because it's the fucking be in your podcast and Neil fucking curses. <laughs> I would never say that shit, man. That's never, I would never say that shit. But I would always say that shit. That is my authentic self. But I would never say that in fear of how other people will perceive what the fuck I'm saying. I don't give a shit anymore, guys. Not because I don't have a heart, but because I have a heart too big for myself to allow other people to change that. So why am I going on this huge ramp? One, because nutrition is important. And it's not about how you look physically. It's about how you actually are with your health. I don't eat carnivorously because... I don't love carbohydrates. I don't eat carnivorously because I don't love fucking cake. Like I, I don't eat carnivorously because I don't love creamed spinach. I don't eat carnivorously because I don't absolutely crush. I love Cobb salads with all the bacon. Um, I don't eat those things. I love honey glazed carrots. I love corn on the cob. I love, oh goodness, all of the vegetables, but. I make some banging Brussels sprouts too, by the way. I can't eat those things, man, because they're not good for me. That's why I don't eat them. And so when it comes to your health and nutrition and your fitness, please, guys, there's always a good, better, best, but you've got to think more than just your physical appearance. All right, so that's that. Next, there are a million reasons to be scared, but you can never regret going 100% as your authentic self because it is you. So whatever endeavor you are thinking about contemplating or waiting for someone to tell you, yes, this is me telling you, yes, the fuck are you waiting for? Don't wait until you're 41 years old and you're like, oh shit, I found out I've been giving my piece away. Yeah, it's not too late. I'm making my changes. I'm still very young, but that's not the point. The point is the entire point is that you only have today because tomorrow is not promised. So get to work. Get busy living or get busy dying. You have this time. Use it. And listen, at the end of the day, all of us have reasons that we feel like if we are our authentic selves, there will be, there will be people that don't like us. Who gives a fuck? There are going to be people that don't like you anyway. The person that you're pretending and acting to be like right now, there are people that don't like you and that's not even who the fuck you are. So if people aren't going to like you, might as well give them a real reason not to like you. You being you. Whew. Last but not least, the manifestation of life is real. I'm having these conversations with these women because I promised... I promised my boy, shout out to Adrian. He's not going to listen to this. He only speaks Spanish. I shouldn't say that he also speaks sign language. Um, he can't hear me say, well, he could hear, whatever. Um, if he does listen to this nice, he's like, Neil is crazy. Um, but, you know, I promised him I was going to get into any serious relationships right now. I'm going to date and I'm going to allow the time of learning who these women are and what a friendship with them is like to determine and dictate if and who I get serious with, if I get serious with it, with any of them at all. And in doing that, in manifesting that peace in this process, it has been beautiful. And it has allowed me to, to also nurture the enjoyment of true friendships, of truly meeting strangers like Daniel, for instance. Yo, hanging out with him is super cool. Not because of any other reason that he's just super cool to hang out with. Like, we have good conversations. He's got a very open mind. He doesn't need to get babysat. Fucking works out great. Like, you know, he showed up at this convention. He, I just got off, got dropped off. I looked at my phone and saw he had messaged me. So I looked at the messages and he had called. Or no, he gave me his number to call. So I called him. 
And yeah, we talked. I was like, yo, I'm at this convention. Eye candy's great, but uh, I'm here. Got to do some things. So if you want to link up, we can. But uh, you know, this is where I'm at. I got to get this done. So he was like, where is it? I tell him. He's like, cool. I'll meet you there. He gets there. <laughs> this is fucking, this is some energy shit. He gets there. You know, most people, when they arrive at a destination, will text you, hey, I'm here. Where are you? He doesn't do that. I'm in the middle of talking to a woman, uh, the owner of a clothing line brand, sharing social medias with her. I'm recording a video so she could share it on my social media. And he just finds me. He's like, hey, what's up? We talk. And then just kind of just, it's like merging on the highway. We just continue going throughout the, the expo. Um, a couple of times he gets lost, turned around in a different place. I'm, I'm off having a conversation with someone else and, you know, that's cool. We'll just figure, we'll figure out where we are later when, when we figure it out as time kind of just curves back. It is super easy. Like friendship should be. Um, still learning more about him and things he's been going with, but this is what I can tell you. We've had some very transparent conversations about life, about experiences currently in the past, what we want in the future. Um, and that aspect of just being our authentic self it's fucking great. And everyone in this world needs to get more comfortable doing that. So here's what I can promise you guys. I don't want this episode to be too long. We're already at 40 minutes of me, me talking. But what I can promise you is that I'm going to be my authentic self. 100%. Um, I was going to give you guys a shocker video. And I'm still going to talk about my sexual background and experience and things but differently than I originally was going to. And the reason for that is I don't know who my future wife is going to be. And though she will have to accept the fact that I live my, my life extremely openly, I don't necessarily need to share information that will always have her questioning or feeling insecure about some of the experiences I've had and how she stacks up to them. Uh, I thought a lot about that. And as a person that has my own insecurities about life in general, I feel like, one of the reasons I said I never want to date a webcam model is because it's always out there. You can never, never go away. Is the reason I'm telling you that right now. There are things that I'm not going to share because it will always be out there and it's not going to go away. And though my, my future wife may accept every single aspect of every crazy ass thing I have ever done, her family might not. Her friends might not. Fuck. I don't want to be known for some of these stories that I could share in the world that people would listen to and be like, oh, for real. I mean that. Like, you guys have no idea. So I am going to share some details of things, but I'm not going to share everything. And so just understand that. But we're definitely going to have some fun on some future episodes. And one of the reasons also just as a closing out, I want to set the bar for my guests. We are, I'm going to have some very fucking real and very open ass conversations with my guests. And it's impossible for my guests, one, to understand how in which I'll go through unpacking said things and having those conversations if I don't show it here as an example first. And secondly, I want to set the bar for how authentic I am, how uncomfortable I get in sharing my insecurities, my successes, my failures, my life, so that they can come on as a guest and feel comfortable and welcome to do the same. Okay. All right. Listen, love, peace, and hair grease. But more importantly, be new. Be you. Please be who you are. Do it. Be Neo. This doesn't matter who you were yesterday. You can change to be whoever you want to be tomorrow. Front sight focus. Get it done. Be who you want to be. And as you do that, I will support you by sharing who I am. Like it or fucking love it, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, for allowing me to come on here and just share openly about the randomness that is in my mind and for sharing this with someone else because, yeah, you know, these are private conversations. I know it's a public podcast and I'm putting this all out there, but this is intimate for me. This is me talking to you the same I would my closest friends here with me right now. You guys are my closest friends. So thank you. Like, subscribe, comment.
give it a thumbs up wherever you can share it with someone that you know needs to hear this and needs to tap into a thought process of every dream they've ever had actually coming true without any limitations being a possible. All right, guys, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.